once again, everybody, and welcome to the Manny Diaz Show. Joe Zagacki with University of Miami head coach Manny Diaz. Of course, my broadcast partner, Don Bailey Jr. And what a week for the University of Miami. And coach on campus at one of the fraternity houses across the street from the Heck Center. There's a big sign that says, Joaquin said dominate. And boy, did you dominate. Our dominate play- Florida State. Our, our players really did. They were... Um... They were great from start to finish. I mean, I, I, I got to give them all the credit. Uh, it was a weird night, you know. We had the threat of a lightning delay uh, that kind of wrecked our pregame routine. And like everything else in 2020, they just adjusted. They, uh, they kept their focus on the task at hand and really went to work on them on the first drive of the game and, and never let up. Coach, coming into the stadium, um, Miami, Florida State, you never would expect to see an empty parking lot. You run through the smoke. You'd never expect to see just 13,000 people. It looked like it had no impact on your players. They were so prepared mentally to take on Florida State and under any circumstances, and that's got to be something you're proud of. You know, we told them at the hotel before we left, you know, think about it, Don, from your standpoint, or Joe, how many Florida State-Miami games you've been a part of, you know, and, and even in my career, you know, obviously my fifth in a row now at UM. For these guys, you know, four – You know, maybe five, you know, for maybe Derek King, it's his only shot at it. And history won't talk about whether there was anyone in the parking lot or a lightning delay or, you know, we had to wear a mask on the sideline. There's just going to be a score. And for 2020, there's just going to be a score next to Miami, Florida State. And they had to write the story they wanted that score to be. And I thought that was really the coolest part. The distractions, everything else, they they let it all go and they put out a performance that uh, they'll be proud of for the rest of their lives. You mentioned uh, a score, and usually this is one, this this is a rivalry, you hold on to it for 365 days. This one, because of the score, the most points scored ever in this game, is going to be held on for infinity, an incredible performance right from the get-go with a very aggressive offensive game plan. Yeah, and anytime you have a chance to set a record in a series as you know historic as this, that's a, that's quite an accomplishment. Uh, but to your point, I mean, we... we you know, we scored, obviously, touchdowns the first five times we had the ball, but but it wasn't as easy as it seemed. Uh, there were some big, big-time third-down and fourth-down conversions that kept us on the field, and what was happening is we were stacking plays on their defense, a 13-play drive, an 18-play drive, and at the tempo we go, those are like body blows in a boxing match, and sooner or later, their gloves started to fall. Manny, I believe the number was 28 first quarter plays. For, forget the points. You talk about stacking it up. I mean, that's in some games, that's a half a game that you, you actually put in the books in the first quarter. That had to pay off. But talk about importance of how Derek King played and just his leadership in a so-called big rivalry game. Well, you saw it on those third downs. You know, I mean, obviously, you know, Derek makes so many plays to make us go, but um, – you know, I think there's five third down opportunities in the first two drives uh, that end up being touchdowns. You know, and all it takes is just any one of those to not convert, and and you're off the field, and it's and it's it's a big stop for them on the road. So, the fact that you've got a quarterback that can go back there, and and, and every week we're getting a different style of defense than what we had prepared for on film. They played a you know more of a eight man drop stuff that they hadn't really done, and and he just goes out there and just goes to work, and it's it's. Uh, his calm, cool demeanor that I think gives the entire football team confidence. 11 for 16 on third downs, 52% now for the year, which that number alone is a, is an entire talking point probably on this show here uh, today. But I did want to mention you've defended Florida State five times. They have gone over 20 points only one time, and the last two times they haven't gone past 10 points. Yeah, and let me be a stickler. The one time they went over 20, that was a punt return that gave them over 20. So <laughs> <That's right. laughs> their offense hasn't gone over 20 in, in, in half a decade, which is which is great. I thought Blake Baker and our entire defensive staff had a great plan for them. I, I thought we played very fast. Florida State did the same thing that they had done in the, in the opener. They have this opening drive where they have a, a weird script of plays and, and formations and motions that they had not really shown. Uh, so it took a great goal line stand to keep them out of the end zone that first drive, and then we settled down, and from that point on, um, 13 TFLs, a uh, uh, ton of sacks, just big-time pressure on the quarterback, and, and really a performance to be proud of. I mean, let's spend a second on the defense. I think it was Coach Baker got the Gatorade, uh, got the Gatorade bath. That was nice to see because I, I could tell that defense was, is raring to go. I mean, the offense has gotten a lot of conversation in the last three weeks, but when you, when you look at the energy 
that your defense maintained through the entire game and the numbers. Like you said, six sacks, I believe it was, the tackles for loss, three interceptions by three different people on three different quarterbacks. But what a phenomenal day overall for the defense. It seems like they really came together for that event. They really did. I think they're playing really, really hard, um, and and that's been exciting to see. I think our defensive line is is playing with a lot of effort this year, more consistent than maybe a year ago, which has been encouraging. Got a lot, much better leadership across the board um, on our defense now than we did a year ago. So, and then look, like you say, it's not easy playing defense when your offense goes up tempo. It it, it makes it harder in practice because you see it every day in practice that. It can make it harder in the games if your offense can't stay on the field. Of course, we, we, we only had one three and out on Saturday. But um, but great team ball. You know, we, we turned the ball over once on offense and one on special teams, and the defense went out there both times and put the fire out. Two sudden change stops, which are really crucial. So we were great in the great situations. You know, sudden change, red zone, and third down, and that really was our key to success. Your defense, as Don said, was uh, great all night. There were two plays that, to me, really stand out, almost a, a microcosm of your defense because of the relentless nature of the two plays and the instincts. One was uh, the interception by Jalen Phillips. Nelson, Nesta Silvera breaks up the reverse. And the other one was the interception by Blades in the end zone. You're backed up. But Bubba Bolden makes a great play jumping in there and deflecting the ball. Those were both enormous plays, and again, crucial situations. One was a sudden change, the, the play after a, um, a turnover, and the other one was a red zone third down, which is, uh, I mean, that's almost combining two crucial plays. And so uh, to get to come away not just with stops on those plays but with turnovers um, is amazing. Actually, it's a great tease because we'll talk about those in the breakdown segment later. <laughs> Manny, it's the, the defensive tackle position is almost like the offensive line. You, you rarely talk about them. The O line, if they give up a sack, or the D lineman, if they get a sack, you talk about them. But I watched that very close in the TV copy afterwards. All four of your defensive tackles, those guys really put it together. It really helped the defensive end shine, which which Joe was talking about. But there's some uh, unsung heroes that are playing defensive tackle for Miami. That's right. Well, I'll tell you what's starting to happen, Don, and, and at a couple of different spots on our team is we're starting to get competition. And, you know, we've played defense, for example. We've played some pretty good defense over the last few years, but sometimes the difference between the first-line guys and the second-line guys doesn't give you that great competition and that edge. And I think the emergence of Jared Harrison Hunt, who had another outstanding game, um, well, that lit a fire under John Ford. You know, John Ford's a senior. This is his time. But all of a sudden, he sees a guy like Jared making plays. John Ford probably played his best game right. as a defense tackle at Miami. You know, Jade Silvera really the last couple weeks has been playing at a very high level. So, again, that's what made Miami Miami in the past is great competition on Green Tree practice field. And the idea that if you're not doing it, there is probably someone that's going to take your job. I think we had 30 players log a tackle or an assist in this game. So we got a lot of young guys in the game. Um, at all three levels defensively, and that's only going to benefit us going forward. Uh, Coach, along those lines with competition, what are you starting to see from your two primary corners, DJ Ivy and Al Blaze? Because they're, they're making plays. Al's coming up with a couple of interceptions. That stuff doesn't happen by accident. Well, we talk. It, sometimes it's the plays you don't see uh, because the balls that are not thrown. Uh, we, you know, Florida. Look, it's been three years in a row, and Terry, you know, who's got all kinds of records at Florida State and all ACC, this that, and the other. He's only caught one ball on us in three years. He did not catch a pass in the game the other night. And a lot of times they are trying to throw the ball deep and and you're just kind of, you know, locking these guys up at the line of scrimmage. We had some great plays of some bump and run man coverage, denying them what they want to do. And so when you see the quarterback sometimes running around the defensive line, getting after him, really a lot of times that's happening because uh, those guys are doing a great job at the line of scrimmage and putting their hands on those wide receivers. Maybe the benefit of playing everybody – every game and that's something that has not really happened at all since you've been here in, in five years and really Joe and I can go back uh, 15 years 17 years where you, not everybody gets in the game and we're in a fist fight from start to finish the value of these young guys getting in even for a series or two I saw Van Dyke I think he got in for for one play but just to get on the field how that helps down the road it's it's enormous and in a year where think about it now you lost a couple of your non-conference games um, that's why those games are so important in college football because, look, they may sometimes be not competitive, um, but that's the only time you really get a chance to, to develop the youth of your team. Uh, we don't get preseason games like the NFL normally does. Um, so you don't think it's normally going to happen in your rival game, but, but, but sure enough. Um, and look, we, we, you know, for example, the defensive staff, 
I think we had eight or ten freshmen on the field uh, the last time Florida State had the ball. Now, Florida State drove down the field. There were some guys making mistakes. And what a great opportunity we talked about as a staff. What a great opportunity to really get after these guys and show them because a lot of times when they're not playing, they don't know why they're not playing. <laughs> and then they get their chance, and all of a sudden, oh, okay, I see why Coach is saying this, and now they will be so much better um, for it. And they're also doing a great job for us in special teams. So the depth of our team is really helping us right now. I want to jump back for a moment the way uh, Coach Lashley attacked Florida State because when we think about Miami, Florida State, you always think, oh, man, if you can get one yard in the, in the run game, you've done something. You're fighting for every inch. And uh, I'm thinking, well, Florida State's going to try to gang up on our run game here. But he comes out, I don't know, maybe the first 25 plays, 18 of them were passes. It's a pass to the – it's a swing pass. It's a swing pass. It's down the middle and two drives ending uh, with long balls in the end zone. Right. And, you know, and, of course, sometimes those passes might be RPOs where there was a run called with the pass as well. But, um, but you have to keep in mind – Florida State came out in a brand new defense. They went from a four-down defense to a three-down defense uh, with some eight-man drop pictures and, and some different coverage looks, everything different than what Derek had practiced all week and everything different than what Red had game planned for all week. No different than really what UAB did in the opener. So I think our, our staff's ability, what they've shown after the first three games, to, to think on their feet very quickly and to make quick, quick adjustments – and our offensive line, it's not the easiest thing in the world to practice blocking a four-down front exclusively in practice, and all of a sudden you get presented with a three-down front. The rules change, how you ID, the, the blocking assignments change, and those guys went out there, and you know it's hard to remember their defensive line actually making a play during the course of the game. Mandy, you're running backs. You played four. Uh, you've had basically, you've played four, I believe, in, in week one and in week three, but you've got the three guys. Of, of course, you've got... Uh, your, your junior and then your two freshmen that are getting a lot of the carries. The importance of being able to use all three of them or all four of them if you include Robert Burns. Well, this is where we start to wear people down, right? You know, think about like in baseball terms, you know, you've seen the thing in baseball where you try to get the starting pitcher out of the game, you know, because you know you can tee off on the bullpen. Well, the more we get the defense tired and worn down and worn down and worn down, now we get a chance to play against their twos at times or really tired ones. And, but for us, we got to stay fresh. So the fact that you can, you know, hit him with Harris and then here comes Knighton or here comes Chaney or whatever the order is, you know, fourth quarter, now they're really worn down. Now guess what? Now you get to tackle Robert Burns, which is no fun at all. Um, and I think those guys, they enjoy that. They enjoy the ability to know, look, when I go on the field, I can empty the tank. I don't have to pace myself because if I, if I can't do it, the next guy goes in, let me go, you know, on the sideline, you know, power myself back up again and get ready to go in there and give my all. Four in a row now against the Florida State Seminoles. When we come back, we'll have our breakdown segment as we continue on the Manny Diaz Show. It's now time for the breakdown segment with head coach Manny Diaz. And coach, what do you have for us today? Well, today we're talking about critical situations. Um, it's easy when you win a game 52 to 10 to say, oh, it was just, you know, it was a walkover. It was easy. Um, there are some plays that happened in some critical situations that really led to the separation on the scoreboard that we saw. And really, I'm talking about third down, talking about sudden change, and then red zone. So we're going to start off with third down on offense from that first drive. So if you take a look right here, this is the third play of the game on offense. It's third down and four. So difficult situation. It may be a, it may be a long three, okay? And this would be a great momentum-building stop for Florida State's defense if they can get it. Now, keep in mind they're playing a different style of defense. Uh, three down linemen, you know, in sort of a robber style dime package uh, with a bunch of stand up guys. All right, so we're going to call just basically an inside zone play and a great run here by Cam Harris to get north, get about five yards, and get that first, first down. Take a look at Don the blocking here from the backside. Starts off, watch, watch the combo block here with Zion Nelson and Ja'Kai Clark. Man, great job. They neutralize right there. Corey Gaynor's one-on-one -on, -one on the nose. So he's just absorbing that guy and sort of taking a draw right there. And then again, watch the movement here. Brevin Jordan, everybody sees the touchdown you know, passes and the big plays. But watch him and Jared Williams. That's Marvin Wilson driving Marvin out. He's turning sideways to the sideline. And now it comes down to DJ Scaife's solo block right there, and he's got his guy covered up. Don, you think you run through one of those holes right there? I think both of us could. Coach, you go to DJ Scaife. There's an example of how he has improved because of the weight room. 
Well, I don't know, two years ago he doesn't do that. Last year he might have struggled with it. But to take on a guy coming downhill like that, it shows that the weight room has paid off. Oh, there's no doubt. And you, you can see it right there. Hits and, and completely neutralizes the guy. And then a great cut right here by Cam Harris. 18 can't see Cam right now. Understands it's third down and short. Get north and get the first down, which he does. So now that gives us an opportunity to play third down again. And here we are again. Now it's third down and nine yards to go. So, again, a very difficult situation to convert for the offense. And another opportunity for Florida State to get off the field in a big situation. Okay? And, and just, again, just watch how important this is and now how many different guys have do a great job, starting with Cam Harris. They come with a blitz. Cam does a great job of picking up the blitz. And they're running a little post-wheel combination here in the boundary. And watch a great throw and catch. So look at, number one, look at Derek's protection. Look at the, the green grass in front of him, a great place to, to, to step up and throw. And then watch when he throws the ball where Mark Pope is. See how he's already got the arm off the ball? And look where Mark Pope is in his break. That ball is already ready to come out, all right, before the defense has any idea. And then watch Mark Pope make a big-time catch. Boom, snags the ball out of the air, just like you're taught. Gets the first down yardage. Big, big-time play on a third down and long situation against the Blitz. Coach, the other side of it is for the receivers, they've got to know where to get to when it comes time for the first down. It's one thing if you make the catch and you fall short, you've got to get to the line to where you can convert the first down. That's exactly right. And watch the way Mark almost steps right on the corner's toes right here, gets all the way out there, and then breaks it inside at the last moment. And then, by the way, you got Mike Harley wide open on the wheel you know, if Derek needed to go to that as well. So another big third down conversion. Here we go, get the tempo going, and another opportunity to make something happen. Again, just one more time, the protection on the backside. Dude's doing a really nice job staying in it, staying after it on a difficult twist to pick up. Gives Derek time to make the throw untouched. So guess what that gets us? An opportunity to have another what? Well, this time it's not a third down. We had a third and 13, and we threw a screen that made it fourth down and three. Now, we have the, the, the faith, we saw last week, that Jose Borregales can make this kick right here from, you know, 53, 54 yards. But we think right now with the ball in this part of the field, we have a chance to convert and, 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 and go for seven. Because all the, all the data says, you know, three is great, but seven is really where you win the football game. So another critical situation, fourth and three. Guess what? Another big-time momentum-changing play if Florida State can get a stop. You see they're all, again, they've got the, the robber-style defense, just three defensive linemen. They, they played coverage the first third down. They blitzed the second third down. Now we are in a critical fourth down, and they're going to play coverage again. Now Derek's going to read this play from this side of the field back across. All right, and his first read is Mike Harley in the flat. All right, so Mike runs in the flat. This guy, they've got this guy inside leverage that's covering Mike. It's a layup. The ball's out. Boom, Mike gets it, gets the yardage needed for a first down. And off we go again. So, again, not a very complicated play. Not something that seems like it's, you know, difficult. But, again, a great job of Derek going through the first read. Okay. He's got, he's got a corner route going here. He's got Mallory. He's got D. Wiggins coming here on the backside. But a simple, easy completion. Understands what the coverage is, where, where there's a weakness in the coverage. Easy pitch and catch. Talking about spreading the field, Coach, you had a back all the way on the left-hand side uh, out in the flats as well if he had to go there as an emergency. That's exactly right. And, and again, this time they choose not to rush the passer. So, again, it's a very easy job for offense line to stay solid and for Derek to get the ball out of there. That's easy. But guess what that gets us the opportunity to do? To play third down again. So here we are. It's now third down and four. Okay, we've got to get to the 20-yard line. So this is the next sequence of downs. Again, another opportunity for Florida State to stop us on the first drive. And what's cool here, what you're going to see, Don, is we're going to run the exact same play again, okay, that you just saw. But what you're going to get the chance to see now is Derek go through his reads, very similar to what you saw on some third downs last week at Louisville. Okay, so again, it's going to start with Harley, just like he was the time before. He was, remember, this guy was inside leverage, right? So it might be there again, right? Let's see what happens this time. Aha. Florida State says, not this time. We're going to jump into cover two. All right, so the corner is sitting there jumping Harley right there at the sticks in the flat. Well, the next read is you got Mark Pope on a corner route, right? How do we think that is? Well, that probably has got a chance to be a completion. Mark runs a great route here. But guess what Mark doing running that route does? That brings that safety way over here on the outside. They're playing with two deep safeties here in the middle of the field. Well, Derek comes off of Mark right here. 
goes back to the middle field. What's the issue with two deep safeties? Where's the weakness in that? Down the middle. Down the middle, right up the middle of the field. So again, there's your running back going wide. There's D. Wiggins coming back on the curl. But all of a sudden, this time, because the coverage covered one, he had a chance at two, but he brought it back to his third read right there. Brevin Jordan cut loose. And if they had covered Brevin, it still could have gone here to there. And that's just, you know, Derek trusting his protection. Offensive line doing a great job. Again, Florida State just choosing to rush three, trying to drop eight in coverage, and daring Derek to beat him. And Derek just trusting his reads, trusting the throw. And what a great start to the game. Coach, the value of having a quarterback like De'Eric King who has the ability to make all of his all of his reads and go through the progressions because there's still a lot of young men that play that position in college football that don't do that or can't do that. Right, and I think what we're seeing now after three weeks is that the dilemma he gives defensive coordinators. Because on one hand, if you want to bring pressure, well, you better get to him because if he takes off and runs, you have nobody left. If you want to play coverage, is he good enough to, to find the holes in the coverage, which it seems like the answer is yes. If you want to spy him, do you have a guy out there to spy him? I mean, it just These are the issues when you have a guy that has the, the running ability that he has, but also has the arm accuracy and arm strength to hurt you down the field. All right, Coach, what's next for us today? Well, we're talking again about crucial situations in the game, okay? Well, this is a sudden change, okay? Unfortunately, we just uh, fumbled the punt back to Florida State. And there's a lot of signs right here, that, and, and the thing we're going to see on these two plays by the defense is situational awareness. When you get put on the field in a sudden change opportunity, very often teams at that time want to try to strike for a touchdown because they know that mentally you're not quite locked in. And then also this part of the field right here is where many people love to try tricks because once you get a first down right here, you lose the ability to really throw the ball deep once you get in the high red zone. So our defense is already aware. You see, we've got a great job. We've actually have our two safeties back. All right. We already know something's up because they've got the quarterback, the backup quarterback lined up at wide receiver. All right. So everybody's kind of understanding. Everybody's antennas are up. Okay. Now the defensive line, they're just aware there's a snap. There's Florida State in front of them, and they're trying to penetrate and run deep in the backfield. Okay. So again, as they run the reverse to the quarterback, look at the defensive line. Look at Jade Silvera and Jalen Phillips already blowing through Florida State, and Jade Silvera is already five yards deep in the backfield. Look at Gilbert Frierson at a great game, diagnose the play very quickly, and shoot back into the backfield. So by the time the quarterback is maybe looking to throw the ball back to the backside quarterback, okay, and we've got a, a, a cover two corner that's sitting back there, plus Zach McLeod recognized the play and is on the way. So a lot of guys, situationally smart, understanding what's going on. 13 gets the ball, and now he's got a bad down. And what he has to decide right now is how bad a down does he want it to be. And he decided to make it a terrible down for Florida State. Tries to get rid of the ball, tries to make a play. Jalen Phillips hustling the ball. Great play to get the interception. Big time play. And what a, again, we talk about momentum. Those third downs were so big for momentum for our offense. Then in a game when Florida State had a way back into the game, and you do a great job. We got to be smart on the celebration, but doing a great job to get the ball right back to your offense, who guess what they did? They went down and scored. But watch, watch Jade Silvera just blowing through the back block of the center. No change of direction. See how, the, see how everything is just full speed. Great job. Finishes on the quarterback. Quarterback tried to just salvage the play by throwing it away. And then Jalen, a pretty acrobatic catch to snag with one hand, secure the catch, make a huge play for the Canes. And coach, your guys were following their rules. Silvera being as deep as the deepest and on the defensive inside with Phillips as wide as the widest. That's why they were in the position to, to come up with the pick. That's exactly right. And, that, and, that's, and that's what normally is not going to be the case in a sudden change because, you know, usually you lose a little bit of focus in those situations. And then the last play we're going to talk about here is on third down. And again, we talk about third down being so important, okay? But not just third down. It's a third down in the red zone, Okay. They like to call these four-point plays because the difference between making someone go for three and seven, obviously the difference is four. This is going to end up being a seven-point play right here. Okay, But there's a couple things. Formationally, our guys through film study had an idea of what play was going to come. Okay, And the guy that really starts the whole thing off right here is Bubba Bolden. Does a great job of reading the quarterback size. Okay, We're going to bring a pressure here from the boundary and just watch our players. The quarterback is going to decide to... Uh, to throw the ball to the inside slant and watch our players 
converge right here in what appears to be open. Looks like there's some space in there right now. Watch the eyes and the break here in this zone coverage. And everyone, and then Bubba throws the hand up right there, knocks it away. And then Al Blades, who never breaks stride right here in his outside third, bang, is able to make the pick in the end zone. So really not just holding him to a field goal, but taking away on the inside is massive. Heck of a job. Never give up attitude by the defense. And to show just the pass rush, the quarterback threw the ball as quick as he can. But watch what Quincy Roche does right here. Sometimes it's easy to look at the sacks, but watch what he does to the center on this play right here. Comes underneath the stunt and watch watch him hit the center. And look, look at that body position right there. That's a big man right there. And he is with one arm, with that proper left knee forward, he is running that center. So see how the quarterback can't really finish the throw and how he's already, Blackman's got to step out because his plant leg is about to get stepped on or rolled on by his center. That's pretty dominating stuff right there. Coach Bubba Bull in the last two weeks have had, has out, had outstanding games statistically, but there's an example of instinct. And that's something that you coach and you talk about it, but a lot of that comes from his ability to just be a great football player. It's, it's instinct and it's preparation, you know, and, and Coach Bonda and, and Coach Rump and, and Coach Baker – you know, they had talked about what to expect by different formations, what their favorite pass plays are. So they had an idea. And then we know anytime the back free releases, it's going to be some type of a quick pass. And lo and behold, it is. Everyone's breaking on the quick pass. You've got a bunch of guys in the neighborhood. And then tips become picks. That's always the rule we say, and it was great to have one here. Thank you for joining us with the breakdown segment with head coach Manny Diaz.